sunrise with Jesus. Friends, do you know that our circumstances can offer us graces? The Word of God says, let those who are weeping live as though they are not weeping. And let those who are rejoicing live as though they have nothing to rejoice. Let those who are using the world not use it fully because this world is passing. Now, St. Augustine explains this passage, which seems a little weird, a little vague to us. He explains it very clearly. He says, there are two people who find favor before God. First, the rich man who does not take pride in his riches. And secondly, the poor man who does not grieve about his poverty. And then St. Augustine continues to explain by saying, and there are two people who lose the favor of God, the rich man who takes pride in his riches and the poor man who grieves and complains about his poverty. The great saint Pope John Paul II gives this very precious piece of advice. He says, do not waste your suffering. Now, we have heard, do not waste your time, do not waste your talents, or do not waste your money. But he talks of suffering as an investment, as something precious, as an asset. Listen to what Saint Jose Maria Escriva talks about suffering as an apostolic activity. He talks of suffering as an apostolate, like preaching or like healing. He says suffering has a very powerful role in bringing out salvation for the world. And then we have Saint Teresa of Avila who says the prayer of a suffering person has utmost value. She says, it is more and more precious than those hours that you spend in meditation and where you even manage to squeeze out a few tears. So she says, so precious is suffering. Friends, when we look at the words of the saints, we realize for them, suffering was an ally, an ally in experiencing the power of God. Scripture, for instance, lists out a whole set of blessings. Firstly, it brings us closest to God. Psalm 34 verse 19, the word of God says, God is close to the brokenhearted. God chooses to make his dwelling with those who are suffering. And the second thing scripture promises us is, when we suffer losses, we have a God who will make it up to us. A God who takes it upon himself to recompense us. And guess what? He doesn't give us back just what we lost, but he gives us back in double measure. Thirdly, in suffering, we are being sanctified. Every tear we shed goes on to cleanse us and sanctify us. So suffering is indeed a channel of plentiful graces. But guess what? Like any other grace, we can even lose the graces of suffering. Now, there are five ways in which we can lose the graces of suffering. First is when we doubt the goodwill of God. Now, very often when something bad happens, we can immediately connect and make a logical reasoning that God is unhappy with us or God is punishing us. But we must know God is unchangingly good-willed and gracious and loving towards us. So therefore, the first thing we must resist is the doubt of God's goodwill. Secondly, when we have suffering, we cannot afford to complain and slip into self-pity. Well, it may seem very natural. When something happens to me, I could say, oh, why is this happening to me? I am doing so much good. 
I only meant well, and all these things have come against me. So this is what suffering can threaten to lead us to, and we need to be very, very watchful that we don't slip into self-pity. Thirdly, when we have suffering, we must be very careful not to slip into negative self-help modes. What do I mean? When we have a suffering, we could feel that we have a certain license to slip into bad habits like alcohol, like gossip, like revenge, unforgiveness for those who we think are responsible for our suffering. We could have reasonings, but guess what? These reasonings are from Satan to deprive us of the graces of suffering. Fourthly, when we have suffering, we should be careful to learn the lesson from the suffering. Every suffering comes with a grace of sanctification and to teach us a better way of life. Every suffering is a purifying experience and that is why we pray that these present circumstances in the world will above everything else make this world a more godly place, a more heavenly place, a place where there's more compassion and love and mercy and goodness. Lastly, when we have suffering, we must be careful to avoid holding grudges against those who are having what seems to be an easy life. Well, you can remember right from childhood when you need to go for an exam and you're toiling and going to school and you see your sibling relaxing and enjoying life, we begin to grudge that. Well, friends, that is childish and that is forgivable. But as we grow older, we need to be careful not to grudge the blessings that others have. These are five ways in which we can lose the graces of suffering. And perhaps, let us be honest, very many of us tend to complain, tend to get into negative modes. And therefore, there are three things that we need to adopt in order to ensure we don't lose the graces of suffering. And the first is this, praise God. The scripture says, praise God in all circumstances. And when you use your tongue to praise God, you will not be able to complain. Why? You are praising God for even the tough situation you are in. You are praising God for the suffering. You are praising God for the privilege to suffer. Secondly, when we have a suffering, we must be watchful not to allow any negative thought to come into our mind. And here is why we need to read the word of God. We need to read the inspirations of the saints because these are words of life that will counter any proposal by Satan. And lastly, remember, a person who has a suffering is given a grace to be compassionate. So in your time of suffering, as you praise God for your circumstances, as you seek out the way of God through the word of God, also seek out to serve, to console, and to help others who are suffering. Yes, friends, there is a glory waiting for us in every circumstance of life, even in the tough and the dark moments of life, there is a huge treasure, a treasure that alone can make our life beautiful. So keep rejoicing, be compassionate, and let the promises of God fill your heart and strengthen you. Follow Jesus carrying the cross because this is a cross that will lead you to the glory of the resurrection. A young man new in a town was visiting a nearby church. As he spent time in the church praying, he also went around the church seeing the beautiful statues and the wonderful artwork. His eyes would fall upon a glass window which had a phrase written on it, Glory to God in the highest. 
but the man also observed that this stained glass window had a small defect in it. The word highest, in that word highest, the letter E was missing. And as a result, the word read as high ST. Looking at this phrase, the man began to think to himself, high ST was the place where I am staying. High ST, high street. And therefore, the man began to reflect and began to understand. God is probably giving me a very strong message as I come to this new town. God is telling me, glory to God in the high ST. Glory to God in the high street. God is inviting me and reminding me that I need to give him glory in the place where I am living. Yes, that's the beauty and the invitation of every Christian and the beauty of Christian life. To give glory to God in the place where one is with the works and the duties that one is entrusted with. We have the beautiful gospel passage in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. The story of the healing of a centurion's servant. We have this centurion, a man with a lot of duties and responsibilities, having many people under his care and administration, who comes in humility to Jesus. And he seeks to glorify God in the way he is, in the place that he is. This centurion who had humbled himself would come to Jesus seeking for a healing for his servant. We must understand the Roman Empire and its situation. Those were times when servants or slaves were not really given any kind of a consideration. In fact, it was said, when your animals get old, you throw them out and you do the same with your slaves and servants. However, we find this humble centurion having a different attitude. He is willing to consider his slave, his servant, and pleads before the great healer, Jesus, for life and healing. Here is a centurion who is willing to glorify God in his life, in the place where he is, with the duties and responsibilities entrusted to him. He displays a tremendous faith in the Lord. He knew by his own experience that as a man of authority, if I command anyone to do something, that person is ought obliged to obey me. And he saw in Jesus the greatest commander, one who had authority over everybody. And so he would tell to the Lord, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 8. Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. The centurion had the tremendous faith in Jesus, the greatest commander of history, that if he would say a word, things would happen. And Jesus commends the centurion's faith and say, Go your way, your faith will heal your servant. Today you and I are also invited to have such kind of a tremendous faith in the Lord. Do we believe and understand God has the power to work miracles in my life? Do I trust in Him and know God has the authority to do everything good in my life? When you and I trust in the Lord, more and more, trust in this authoritative power of God, we begin to glorify God. Yes, each of us are invited to glorify the name of the Lord in the place we are, with the vocation that God has blessed us with, in the place where we are. Today is a beautiful day given by the Lord to do this, glorifying God in everything that we do in our lives. One of the beautiful prayers that we all recite daily is Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
can we honestly make that not only as a prayer of my lips but as an action that accompanies the deeds of my life in all what we think in all what we say in all what we do can we give glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit the lord invites all of us to make our lives a blessing to others with faith and trust in him and thus to glorify god in everything may god bless all of us live jesus today we have a very special saint saint guy from belgium from near brussels and his life is a testimony to the words of saint augustine saint guy was from a very poor background but this family was very pious and they were very conscious of the caution of saint augustine so in their poverty they would keep praising god and through their poverty they opened up their life to plenteous graces so much so that saint guy through his poverty through his life of suffering became a very powerful intercessor saint friends as we listen to his life may we learn to rejoice in the glories of our suffering a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions the story of saint guy of andelicht saint guy was born at andelicht a village near brussels in the 10th century his parents were farmers and were very pious though born in poverty he was instructed in christian virtue and the practice of the christian faith they would often repeat to him the lessons that old tobias gave his son we shall have many good things if we fear god he embraced poverty as god's will for him and spent his time caring for the poor and sick as a young boy he would often share his meager food supply with beggars and go hungry himself when he was in laken a nearby village he showed much devotion before a shrine of our lady such that the priest there made him the parish sacristan henceforth his great joy was to be always in the church sweeping the floor and ceiling polishing the altars cleansing the sacred vessels and spending each night in prayer by day he still found time and means to befriend the poor while still very young he visited and cared for the sick and he was regarded by the villagers as a young saint a merchant of brussels hearing of the generosity of this humble sacristan came to him to meet him and offered him a share of his business telling him he would have the means thereby to give more to the poor saint guy had no desire to leave the church but the offer seemed providential and he accepted it their ship however was lost on the first voyage and saint guy realized his folly and lack of trust in god he took it as a sign from god for his greed and returned to his old life of poverty as penance for his bout of greed saint guy made a pilgrimage on foot to rome italy and then to jerusalem where he worked for a while as a guide to pilgrims after about 7 years he was able to make his way back to andelicht but was a sick man from all the hardships he had endured he died shortly after being admitted to the hospital at andelicht about the year 1012 His grave which was lost for years was uncovered by a horse. The owner of the horse knew Saint Guy's story and he asked two boys to clear the land and build a hedge so the grave could be seen more easily. The numerous miracles that took place at his grave led them to build a shrine in 1076 to house Guy's relics. God raises up people he does it in a way that is beyond our asking and our imagination but guess what god can only raise up the poor 
the humble, the lowly. Friends, Jesus came to this world and chose to be born poor, chose to walk the way of suffering so that he may lead every one of us to walk in that way, that way that leads to glory, to graces and to the fullness of life. Friends, let us follow Jesus as we bow down and adore him in the lowly form of the Eucharistic bread. We have gathered in this place to call upon his name and worship him. We have gathered in this place to call upon His name and worship Him. We have gathered in this place to call upon His name and worship Christ our Lord. Worship Him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. We have gathered in this place to call upon His name and worship Him. We have gathered in this place to call upon His name and worship Him. We have gathered in this place to call upon His name and worship Christ our Lord. Worship Him, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord has come into our presence. As the Word of God says, in Psalm 34 verse 5 Look to Him and be radiant Look to Him and be radiant This morning the Lord has come into our midst And we call upon His name and worship Him The first thing in the morning too is to worship God In truth and in spirit Look to Him my brothers, my sisters Gaze at Him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. The Lord calls you and the Lord will bless you. And that is a promise. Just as the Word of God tells us in the Gospel of John chapter 15, was one onwards where Jesus himself says I am the wine and you are the branches we look to him we cling to him we become a branch that we can bear fruit for our Lord and throughout this day from this very moment this very moment of the morning it is Jesus who will bless us the Lord says in Psalm 34 verse 1 I will bless you at all times Lord his praise shall continually be on my lips and this is what our calling is to bless the Lord and give him all the glory because we stand by him in the house of the Lord, it is in the presence of God. In the presence of God, it is with our brothers and sisters united in Christ. And this is what the word is telling us. Morning after morning, we come together. So let's forget about our, all ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him. This is the God 
that has come to be with us why not we cling on to him why not we spend time with him because he has kept his promise we in turn keep our promise to be with him let's forget about ourselves let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him yes my brothers my sisters let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship Christ our Lord worship him Jesus Christ our Lord let's forget about ourselves Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Concentrating Him. our minds, our body, our souls. Let's forget to about God and one and only Jesus. And concentrate on Him and worship Worshiping Him. Him must be an act of love let's forget an act about us of his compassion give it to us straight on him an act of love Christ displayed on the cross a reminder that we worship him Jesus Christ my brothers and my sisters looking to him that way we can gather the strength we need for this day comes from Jesus. Looking to Him is what not only strengthens us, but gives us this wisdom to go about the know-how of our day-to-day -day life. He will give us understanding. He will give us knowledge. He will give us the truth and He will give us in abundance the peace. The peace that comes from Christ is a peace that we all look forward to. In that peace is what Christ came into this world to set us chosen people for him to tell him each one of us he tells us you I will give peace peace like no world can give no one can give no situation nothing in this whole wide world can give you the peace that I will give you and clinging on to Jesus the peace that will bear fruit in all in abundance. That is what God wants us to reach out to everyone we meet from this moment, this morning onwards. And wishing our brothers, our sisters in love. Giving our peace that we have received from Christ to others. Telling others that I have met my Lord in the morning and I know that I'll be victorious throughout the day because my God, my God is a wonderful God. My God gives me the strength, gives me the encouragement that I will live for Him, that I will sacrifice myself for him because he gave his life for me all the righteousness we stand complete in him and worship him he is all the righteousness we stand complete in him and our completeness is in you jesus 
Your word says in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12, You have said that I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. But will have the light of life. Yes, my Lord, my Savior, whoever follows me will never go back into their old self. Will always look ahead unto you, Jesus. The light, the power, the wisdom, the control of our lives is in your hands, Lord. Because we submit, we dedicate, and we give our lives entirely into your loving hands. You enlighten our lives. And this enlightenment, Lord, we take to others. And that is exactly what you want us to do. To take you, your light, your love, your word to others. To touch those downtrodden. To reach out to the weak, the feeble, the unloved, the unwanted. Those, Lord, who do not know you. We want to give you to them, Jesus. And we know that the more we give to others, God, the more we will be strengthened by your love. Jesus, all I can say is, God, we wait every morning that you give us your strength. Just like the branch that clings on to that wine, that branch that draws sap, that draws strength, that draws love. And in turn, this love, this strength, this sap will bear fruit. And this fruit is for your glory, God. It's for you, Jesus, that we walk in your holiness. To be holy, to be worthy, to stand for you, God, with all love and boldness. To cling on to you is to renounce everything of this world. No turning back, no walking in darkness anymore. You are our light. In this light, God, come and bless us. Bless us, God, for we need your blessing that, that will sustain us day after day. We need you to bless us, God. Bless our families, our near and dear ones, everyone who has come to worship you at this moment. So let us kneel and worship the Lord, crying out to God, You are O sacrament, the holy of holies. Most holy, oh sacrament divine, all praise and all
have been blessed by God. Our circumstances, no matter how tough, are blessed by God. And in our circumstances, there are graces. Today, let us not waste those graces. Let us challenge ourselves today to go through these 24 hours without complaining, but with rejoicing in God alone. God bless you and may you have a beautiful, a blessed, a brilliant day with our greatest treasure, Jesus. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust, CD account number 0402231. 0000014 HDFC Bank Chalakudi Branch IFSC Code HDFC 0000402 and email the details to Divine Retreat Center at gmail.com.